Let's talk about rural properties. Yes. I've got some I've got some great notes on that because with the way the market has been, Tracy, you know, people are starting to look out a little further. Maybe because of COVID, people are going, you know, I need a little more elbow room. I want to move out. I want to get out of the city. And, you know, around Albuquerque, we have a lot of good options. And some people know that they don't have to go back to work in a building. They can work from anywhere. So we're seeing people take advantage, move out a little bit further because they don't have to do the daily commute. The commute's not as important anymore. So first off, Tracy, what are, what are, if somebody's thinking about a rural, first off, let's talk about the areas of Metro Albuquerque that we kind of call rural areas. What would you say? You know, Well, Edgewood, Moriarty, yeah. mm -hmm. Berlin, Really all the East Mountains. All of the East Mountains, they're rural. You know, there's also Santa Fe area in, in Los mm -hmm. Alamos area. And so, you know, to Española, uh, Ribera, up to Las Vegas, you know, just whatever rural properties there might be. Yeah, it's just kind of, you just start getting out outside the metro itself. Yeah, some of the rural properties we're talking about might be in a town versus out in the country. Well, you think about the South Valley or Valley Farms, as we call it, there's some great rural properties right. down there there's corrales there's the north valley which even though they're kind of in the city you still get that rural feel right right and you're Placidus. dealing with some of the things we're about to talk about which are um you know wh what are you looking for right that would be the first consideration right what would it be it'd be hmm. you know do you need space for are you animals looking, are you looking for barn storage you have a, a hobby or collection and you need that right um, is it for animals is it for privacy is it just you need a big view mm -hmm. wide open spaces yep you know sometimes we we like what we grew up with right I, sh I just need to make a side note we have a home listed for sale in uh stanley right now which is north of Moriart moriarty and it's wide open spaces but it was it 70, 70 acres 70 acres a home on 70 acres all yeah. fenced and yeah, so I mean, there's, you know, and really that's not that far, um, you know, from Albuquerque. Right. And, so. you know, some of those properties are for farming, you yeah. know, especially the Estancia Valley, right? They've mm -hmm. got the pinto beans, they've got sweet corn. Yep. There's the whole pumpkin patch out there. So, so the other things that you want to think about on rural properties is what's the water source? Yeah. Is it private well? Are you still in some sort of community water or is it? you know, city or village type water. So they you can know, vary. We, we do live in the desert and, you know, you have to figure out the water situation. And, and I, I'll hear people say, oh, East Mountains, you don't want to go out there because, you know, those wells, you know, they, those wells have problems. Well, East Mountains is a huge area. So it just depends on where it is. And, and having somebody that's, you know, familiar with uh, the East Mountain areas like Melissa Romero on our team, she grew up out there. She's an expert in that, yeah. that part of the world. Um, so wells and or private water systems. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Power. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is the uh, power situation? Do you have reliable power? Um, and backup. Yep. Sometimes, you know, having backup generators are pretty important when you're in a rural area, right? If a windstorm comes through and you lose power, it could be a couple of days. When there's only one person to fix the line for versus 10,000 yeah. people who are without power, you might not be top person on the totem pole. Yeah, and a lot of the close in areas, you know, South Valley, Los Luminas, you know, Valencia County, uh, East Mountains, most of that is P&M still. Right. Except there is uh, Central some, New Mexico um, electrical co-op. There's some rural co-ops, yeah. yeah. Which, which is more Torrance County and, and down in that area. Yeah. So. so the other thing you see in rural areas, Tigo, septic yeah. systems. That's what I was just going to say, septic, septic. So septic... Gen I mean, obviously, these areas we're talking about that are kind of outside of the city have, you know, you see septics a lot. Um, I can only think of some areas in the East Mountains, like Paco has their own water treatment system. But right. For the most part, in the East Mountains, you're going to be having a, a septic system. Right? right, right. And septics are, you know, they've been around a long time. They, and they are pretty simple technology. They are. And they work. You just have to maintain them. And, yep. uh, they work really well. Um, the other things, you know, is there natural gas or are you on some other form of propane? Pro propane. So propane yep. tanks that you can lease or you can own and having reliable uh, companies. You know, 
you can get on a maintenance schedule for propane and that nice truck just comes down your road every once in a while right. and make sure that they top off your propane tank so it's it doesn't ever have to get too low. So a couple more things here, Tracy, is the actual, uh, w when we sell a house that's in a, you know, subdivision, subdivided neighborhood, you know, let's call it track neighborhood. Planned you know, urban we, development. We plan there we go. Thank you. You know, the survey, it's pretty clear where the, the property lines are. You still need a, an, a, a property location report when you when you sell the property. But when you're out in the rural, you may want a staked survey, right? Yeah. Well, stake survey. I'm putting survey, you on the spot here. You're you know, like, if you're uh, going to do a stake survey for 70 acres, it's going to cost a pretty penny, right? Yeah. Um, some, of, some of the land in the rural areas is by meets and bounds and some of it's you know just identified by markers and things but it kind of depends you know why do people need a stake survey a lot of it is because if there's fences the fence lines aren't always on the property line and we've seen that and it's just one of those things when you're when you're looking at a property that maybe is out there uh, the survey is going to be something that's going to be a bigger consideration than again that's in a, a a subdivided neighborhood with you know block walls between each house we should get a surveyor to be on because we have this question come up a lot yeah um other okay. rural considerations yeah, the, the road so yeah. a lot of times you'll have private roads and you know who's responsible for that um who's going to maintain it you know sometimes it's public Sometimes it's public, and if you're in the mountains, maybe they don't plow it. It's like on the third tier of, of what gets plowed when it snows. Uh, that's another thing. Um, you know, something we didn't talk about when we were talking about water, Tracy, was shared wells. Let's just hit on that real quick, because I think that's a, that we do see quite a bit. We do. So shared well is where, you know, to split the cost of putting in a, a very deep well, uh, it might be that more than one house uses that one well. I've seen up to five, I think, in the East Mountains on one well. So maybe one builder uh, has five lots and they do one well and they have it for all the properties. So typically what happens is the homeowners each pay a portion of the electricity to pump the water up, but obviously the water's free. Well, and right? there's different, but, yeah, and there's like... Well equipment. Right, so everybody shares in the cost. cost. Yeah, if the pump goes out. Everybody shares in the cost of it. What's the name of the neighborhood up here off La Luz? The road going up to La Luz um, in Sandia Heights. Green. No, 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 tree. no, 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 no. The one that has the community water system. So it's a small, small. It's not a big neighborhood. Um, Vista something. Anyway, I, I can't think of it. Anyway, it it had you know. There's maybe. Probably It'll come to us 50, in the middle of the 50 night. Fifty homes in, you know, fifty. Some homes are built, some are lot, but it's up. You know, if you take the road up to La Luz, toward at the top, going up toward Luz, and you take the turn off. What's the name of that neighborhood? It's driving me crazy. Sorry, everybody. Okay. Um, Sierra Monte. Thank you. So there's it, that has its own private water system. It's not really a shared well, but it is only I don't know how what fifty properties in yeah. there maybe something yeah. like that okay all right so uh loans when you're doing a loan in rural areas there's opportunities but there's also challenges so the opportunity is usda loans right? which is a hundred percent loan for rural areas to yeah. make sure that they have funding to buy those rural properties one of the things that comes up is like speaking of water some of the properties that we deal with have no water source they just have holding tanks for water and so they have what's called hauled water yep. right where a, literally a water truck comes in and fills up their tank every once in a while and a lot of the lenders traditional lenders don't lend on houses that have hauled water so we have to get you know s uh, really talk to lenders to make sure that they cover those areas but then also that it's common for the area. So yeah. if all of a sudden you're in the North Valley of Albuquerque and they don't have a well and they're not on city water and they say, no, we have hauled water a tank, nobody would lend on that no. because it's not normal for the area. But if you go down to Tahike or Torreon or um, you know places that are a little bit rural, especially on South is it 337 and South 14? I uh, know. I still call it South 14. It but is yeah. South 14, but yeah. there's also 337. They right. kind of come together down there in oh, yeah, yeah. Ir Irisari. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, hauled water is not uncommon in that area. So a lender would go, okay, yes, but not every lender would do it. So yeah. a little yeah. due diligence there. The, the other thing um, on lending challenges, if you're buying a, a, a house 
with a large parcel or maybe an additional parcel next to it, you may have some challenges. They may loan on the one parcel with the house on it, but they may not loan on an additional you know, parcel, let's say. Let's because say it's, it's vacant land, perhaps, yeah. and they don't vent, they don't have programs. Buying right. vacant land is hard to find loans. There's only a couple and some of the credit unions yeah, that will it, it do is, that. It is definitely a challenge. Uh,